Hello, this video will be on recurring events. So basically telling Bubble to do X every week, please. Such as a weekly newsletter for your users, or perhaps finding the best posts of every week as ranked by likes and saving them in your database. We're also going to go over how to view the logs and cancel recurring events. Let's start with an easy use case. People sign up, perhaps as a checkbox to receive a weekly newsletter, and they click the button. What do we want to program on the button? We just want to do set recurring event. To do this underneath custom events, I've done set cancel a recurring event. Then I've selected the one I've created. I'll show you how later. And do this please with a current user. On a monthly frequency, we can also select daily, weekly, quarterly. These, however, require even a higher tiered paid plans, whereas in general, this does require a paid bubble plan. And then we tell it to start now, please. We could, of course, also tell it to start perhaps in three hours from pressing the button. Or what's also very useful, we can select arbitrary date time and just type something in, like an important date for our company. And Bubble will recognize this date immediately formatted, also recognize your time zone, and do it however you've input that. So we're going to just do current day time, of course. And then we go over here to backend workflows. We've done here, and we click the empty box to select new recurring event. We call this one monthly email with type of thing user because we sent over the current user. So here we have to tell it to expect a user. And then we have to select all the actions we want to do on a recurring basis. In this one, it's very simple. We just want to send an email. And what's very nice now that we've sent over the user, we can now select current workflow user. By the way, we can select anything from these options. So we can search for something first. And then you can do high current workflow users username, our monthly update for current day time, and you can extract the month. So it can be our monthly update for January for November. And then what's very nice with Bubble, you can actually create an admin for creating your own weekly emails. So underneath data type, I've just created a data type called weekly email with a text. So you can envision having a page with a multi-line input where I edit and finalize this email. And then one email I can always set as active equals yes. And so in this workflow, we just tell it to search for all weekly emails, but just take that one with active equals yes, and take the text of that and send it to the user who signed up. And that's already it. So they just start the recurring event, send over the user, and then with that user, they send an email to them cancel it. We also have a button. So again, we select set cancel recurring event. It's the same one. And the recurring event is monthly mail and workflow thing current user again. But the frequency is none because of course frequency zero means it no longer occurs. So that's a very simple use case. But of course, you can envision more complex use cases. In this case, we could have finding the best posts, questions, jokes every week. So again, we have a button in this case, perhaps the admin presses it rather than every user upon sign up. Here again, set recurring. And here we just tell it to send over anything. We won't even use that. So that's another thing here. You can select anything. And um, because we saw later when we then have the recurring event and here tell it to expect a question. So therefore we did, of course, select current users list of questions, first item, a question. But here, when we go on with it, we don't even select the current workflow question, but just search the database for questions. So what are we doing here concretely? We're actually within the recurring event, scheduling an API workflow on a list, which list we want to take all questions or all jokes or all posts search for them, but just search for the ones which were created within the last seven days. So create a date greater than current date time plus days minus seven, create a date smaller than current date time, 
and we want to sort them by the likes and take only the two with the most upvotes from the last week. And then we tell the bubble to pass on these two questions which was found in the search and we created another API endpoint using new API endpoint called best questions. We told it to expect questions, so the two with the most likes, right? And now for each of these questions, or however many there are, we create a new best questions, a new data type, which saves that question. This allows us, for example, to have one page in our app called the best posts, the best questions, the best jokes, and display all these questions easily to show to the user. Or perhaps you could also send an email newsletter with your best posts every week in the same way. And you can even, within this API endpoint, also, of course, set a recurring event. There is a, another cool thing you can do. Imagine you had projects and in inventory. So in our example here, we selected bubble to expect questions, but then we, we could have selected anything because instead we just search the database for something else. So another option here is we could just use the user as a transporter. So what I mean with this is if we select current user here and over here, tell it to expect users, then here, instead of searching, we can then do current workflow users list of questions. So we use the user to then transport a list of questions. So you could pay, perhaps have an API workflow where you can use the, you have lots of projects and each project has inventory it needs. So you can then select here current workflows project and then do the workflow with a list of inventory items of that project to perhaps always check if there are enough items of every type, or perhaps to alert sellers or buyers that there are not enough of other types. So it's very useful to use this current workflow user because it allows us to transfer anything which is attached to it easily. Okay, but let's click back button a few times. So it's back to working and let's test this. So whenever we click the sign up button, the email should be created. And then we do the start best of. So of course, in the background, I did create some questions and have two with the most upvotes. And then what I should see in my database underneath app data is these two new ones being created. Here we go. Great. Then. I can also go underneath logs to see what is happening. So I click logs and then scheduler. And now I can show which recurring events are currently active. I can cancel them individually or I can cancel them all. So this is just uh, very useful to have an overview because you can imagine in a complex app, you may have more of them. And now let's also cancel them. And when we click show now, now it's empty because we canceled both recurring events. Okay, hopefully you learned something in this video, which you can use for your bubble app. Cheers.